Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here and welcome back to the railway. Today I'm going to be comparing Dapol's O-scale locos with their double O-scale counterparts. <laughs> Recently, it occurred to me that Dapol produce quite a few locos now in both O scale and double O scale. And while I think most of Dapol's O scale locos are quite a bit better than their double O ones, and they're going to be because they're bigger, there's much more room for more detail and features, but I thought it would be quite interesting to find out which of Dapol's O gauge locos is the biggest improvement over their double O scale counterpart. So that's what we're going to do today. I've identified three pairs of locomotives, as you can see here, and these are going to be the subject of today's video. The first pair is the B4, and these are what started it all, really, because it's only recently that I reviewed the O-Gage B4. So we've got those. We've got the Terriers, of course. We have the Rails-exclusive double O-scale Terrier, and then the general release O-Gage Terrier, which are both pretty cool models. And then finally, we've got the Sentinels. We've got the Model Rail exclusive Little Baby 00 scale Sentinel, and then the general release O scale Sentinel. So today I'm gonna to be comparing these locos in all sorts of different categories. I'm gonna be looking at their costs, their weights, their level of detail, their performance, their features. Hopefully it will be really interesting. So let's get started and talk a little bit about price. So I'm going to start with the loco that has the biggest price difference between O and double O scale, and that is this, the B4. I'm going to use current prices if I can. If not, I'll have to use the prices I paid, but both of these locos are currently available. At the retailers, the double O scale B4 costs £107.41, and the O scale version costs £213.78. So the O gauge version of the B4 is pretty much exactly double the price of the double O scale model. Now, in my O gauge review for the B4, I thought that was really impressive. But actually, this is the biggest price difference between the three pairs of locos I'm looking at today. The Terriers are a little bit closer in price. The 00 scale Terrier cost £110. That's quite an old price, and when that price was announced, I thought they were very expensive. Now, of course, a few years on, post-COVID, that seems like more of a reasonable price. But the O scale Terrier costs £213.78. That's the same as the B4. In fact, all of Dapol's O gauge locos of this size cost £213 at the retailers. It's an odd figure, but there you go. And so the O gauge Terrier costs 194% of the price of the 001. So it's a little bit less than double in this case. And then the smallest price difference is, of course, the Sentinels. So the 00 scale Sentinel currently from Model Rail costs £99. That is the cheapest of the 00 scale offerings today. And the O scale Sentinel is just £166.28 at the retailers. So that's only 168% of the price. It's more like one and a half times than two times. So the Sentinel wins on price. The O gauge Sentinel is a big upgrade, spoiler, but not too much on price. Right, let's talk about weights then. Again, we'll start with the smallest weight difference. That is the Sentinels this time. So the O-Gage Sentinel weighs in at 459 grams versus only 119 grams for the 00 scale Sentinel. That's 3.8 times the weight of the 001. Next is the Terriers. The Terrier is actually really light in O scale. It's lighter than the Sentinel, would you believe, at 447 grams. And the weight of the double O Terrier is lighter than the Sentinel as well at just 101 grams. The difference here is larger though at just over four times the weight. So the O scale Terrier is 4.4 times the weight of the double O one. And then of course the biggest weight difference comes from the B4s. The O scale B4 weighs in at a mighty 740 grams. It's just almost double the other Dapol O gauge locos versus just 92 grams, which is the weight of the 00 scale B4. That O scale B4 is eight times the weight of the 001. So the Sentinel wins on price, but the B4 wins on weight. Absolutely crazy. Right, let's move on and look at some of the detail differences. 
So let's start with the B4s then. Now, obviously, my two B4s are in different liveries, so I can't compare these apples to apples, but what I can say is that they are both decorated to a high standard, although I do think the finish is a little bit better on the O-scale version, whereas the 001 does look a little bit plasticky. Other than that, though, it is fascinating how similar these models are, even down to the tiny little details. Look, the chassis are pretty much the same on the detail down there. You've got all of the little parts exactly the same on the two models. The handrails on the back look exactly the same. You've still got the separately fitted lamp brackets in all the same places. I guess there's a little bit more detail on the O-gauge version if you look at some of these components around the front. Yeah, they are simplified very, very slightly on the 00 scale version. The smoke box door is fixed on the 001, except it opens on the O scale version, so that's a little bit different. And of course, you've got the cab roof that lifts off on the O scale version of the model, whereas it is just fixed in place on the 001. They've both got flickering fireboxes, so they've both got lights. Although I think there is a bit of a difference in the cab detail. The 001 is very, very good, as you can see, but I do think there's just a little bit more detail and definition in the O scale one. They're quite a bit different in terms of the build as well. The 00 version is very, very plasticky, even down to the running plate. Clearly, the O scale version is much more metallic. There is still quite a bit of plastic in the bodywork, but the running plate is die cast this time, which makes the model feel much better quality. Moving on to the Terriers then, again, the liveries are a little bit different, but I would say the quality of the livery application between these two locos is pretty similar. Again, in terms of detail, it is remarkable how similar these two locos are. You don't actually get that much more detail in O-Gage. They are very, very, very similar. The cabs, for instance, are indistinguishable. Despite having a lot more space in O-Gage, they're still exactly the same cab detail, which is, I don't know if that's impressive for the 001 or disappointing for the O-scale one, but they both look awesome. They both have metal details, such as the copper chimneys. They look really, really good. Although I must say the O-gauge whistle looks a little bit better than the 001. Yeah, the O-scale one looks more like polished up. The 001 may still be metal, but it might as well be plastic for how it looks. Also, the 00 scale version of the Terrier has the warping running plate. I actually had this replaced and the replacement had it warped as well. Even the product listing images showed warping on the running plate, so that's a common issue. The O scale one is much better quality in that it's straight and looks better as a result, but otherwise very, very similar. Moving on to the Sentinels then, I think these two models have the biggest difference. Frankly, the 00 version, in my opinion, is a little bit rubbish. It's got a very simple body with limited detailing. I mean, look at the difference here between the chimneys. Very similar on the Terriers, but here we've got a lot of detailed differences. The buffer beams are quite bare and simple on the 00 scale version, whereas in O-Gage, you've got a lot more detail on here. The 00 version does not even have any interior. There's literally nothing inside this model, whereas the O-Gage version has a full interior. It has the most interior detail of any of Dapol's O-Gage locos. Opening doors, masses of painted detail, absolutely amazing, even lights coming from the firebox. The underframes are massively different as well. There's lots of detail on the O-Gage version, including the chains that drive it, fair bit on the 001, but clearly not as much. I think to say that these two are the closest in price of all of the locos we're looking at today, that is very, very surprising because they are indeed the most different. So there you go, there's a few of the detail differences. Let's move on to the performance. For the performance comparison, each loco is going to undergo three simple tests. First of all, a speed and smoothness test. So we'll look at the speed of the loco, talk about how sensible the gearing is, and we'll see how smooth the loco is at speed. Then I'm gonna do a crawl test, so we'll see how well the locos perform at a crawl. And then I'll do a pulling power test, see how powerful they are and compare that. Each loco is gonna have had a little run before these tests, just so that it is slightly warmed up. So we'll start with the B4. Let me run past at 50% and we'll observe the gearing and the smoothness and anything else that we notice. So there's 50% speed. Yeah, beautifully smooth, really nice sensible speed. Any decent torque there? 
50%. Yet, lots of torque in the mechanism, and these two mechanisms are very similar. It even has the front axle, which rocks left and right, just like the O-gauge one does, so quite similar. Right, how's the crawl? Let's just start this very, very gently, forwards. I'm easing it up. The crawl is outstanding, absolutely wonderful. Yeah, so it's going to be hard to improve on this, I think, but I do remember the O-Scale one was awesome. Right, pulling power test. Okay, 50%. There we go. Now, this is a light loco, so I'm not expecting much, and sure enough, I haven't got much either. 0 0.07, I would say. 2, 4, 6. Yeah, 0 0.07 newtons. O-gauge B4 then, let's have a look at its speed and smoothness test. Let's run by at 50% speed. Ready? Oh, there's not a lot in it, is there really? I mean, this is one of the most incredibly smooth locos I think I've ever owned. So if anything, I would say this has it if I had to choose, but there isn't a big difference, is there? Now, what about the crawl? Let's have a look at that. Ready? Yeah, I mean, they were both great, but I think this is better. Look at that, look at the slowness of that. So the crawl is incredible on both, but I think slightly better on this. What's the torque like? Let's just demonstrate that. Let me put my fingers in front of it. Oh gosh, it's mightily strong. All right, yeah, loads and loads of torque, torque to spare. Right, pulling power test. So for this test, I'm using a Newton meter that is sort of 10 times the scale as the one I was using on double O because I happen to remember that this loco was insanely powerful. So with that, let's go forwards and let's see what pulling power this one's got at O scale. That is 1.2 Newtons. Wow, that's insane. So if I just bung that into the calculator, that is 17.1 times as powerful as the double O scale B4. That's crazy. Let's see how the others compare though. Let's go back to double O scale. Terrier time then. This double O Terrier from Dapol has not been a great experience for me. It's quite unreliable across the points, cuts out quite a bit. I'll show you that in a second. And it's also been completely dead for the past year or two. In fact, yesterday before this video, I took it apart and solved whatever it was that was shorting. One of the circuit boards was touching something else and shorting. So I put some insulation on there and tidied it up inside and now it is working. So first of all, let's have a look at the speed and smoothness of this loco. So let's run past at 50%. So it's good and smooth, fairly quiet, uh, a little bit on the fast side, but does seem to be okay. Is there any torque there? Let's run it at 50. Yep, there is actually. Yeah, plenty of torque. And what is the crawl like? These have five pole motors in them, so it should be a good crawler, but I can't remember. Let's have a look. Easing it up. Yeah, so tiny bit jerky. A little bit coggy, stalls momentarily, but then seems to recover. Although it isn't doing now. Turning up a bit. And let me show you how it is on the points as well. So a little bit unreliable. Let's have a look at the pulling power. Okay, well, straight away I can see that it's more than the B4 was. I'm getting 0 0.1 Newtons. So yeah slightly more. Right, O-Gauge Terrier smoothness and speed test. Let me run past at 50% speed for you. Here we go. So I suppose it's a similar story really. Yeah, it is a little bit on the speedy side just like the double O one was. Although there are videos of real Terriers really bombing along so I guess that's fair enough. What's the talk like on this O-Scale Terrier? Yeah, well, as you can see, it's able to push me perfectly easily there, so that's absolutely fine. Right, what is the crawl like? I seem to remember this one wasn't incredible, so maybe double O will beat O on this occasion. Let's see. I'm easing it up. Oh, no, let's try again in reverse. 
So that seems to be about as slow as I can muster. I think, on balance, the double O version has it this time. Yeah. The double O one wasn't fantastic. It was sort of cogging a little bit and stalling, but so is this one. And yet this one is not kicking in until it's at a much higher speed like this sort of thing. Try and slow it down from there, it just kind of stops. So yeah, I would say the double O one is actually slightly better. The O gauge version is not an improvement at all on performance. Right, let's have a look and do the pulling power test. Right, same test again. So 50% speed, here we go. Right, this is gonna have to just settle, so let me stop it oscillating. There we go. So that has settled. That has settled at 0 0.76. Okay, so into the calculator. Yeah, it's obviously a lot more than in double O scale, but only by 7.6 times as much. The B4 was 17 times as much. This one's just 7.6 times as much. So it is obviously a massive improvement, but it's nowhere near the improvement that I saw on the B4. One more pair of locos to test. Let's move on to the Sentinels. On to the 00 Sentinel then, and I was not a fan of the way this Loco ran in its review. It screeched like a dying cat, not that great a runner. Since then, I've serviced it a couple of times and put some oil to the motor, and that's quietened it down. It's actually a very, very decent runner. So let's demonstrate. Let me run past at 50% speed. And uh, incredibly, this is a very, very well-geared slow Loco. That's the 50% speed mark right there. It's really quite impressive, isn't it, that? Is there any torque, or is it just a slow, sluggish motor? Let's see. Forwards, 50. Yep, I can hear that its wheels are spinning. Yeah. So it's got some torque there as well, so it's not just sluggish. And presumably then, the crawl is going to be really quite wonderful, but let's see. I'm going to ease it up very gently. I can't remember how this one crawled on its review. It's been so long. Ain't going, are we? No? A bit more? I think it's going now. Moving very, very slowly there. <laughs> to the point of fast, really, isn't it? Try and smoothly accelerate. Yeah, so... On the whole, all of these double O DAPO locos have been marvellous performers, but what's the pulling power? Let's have a look. There it goes. And it's looking like it's about the same as the Terrier at this rate. Yep, 0 0.1 Newtons. Right, Steam Sentinel in O gauge, and this has got a lot to live up to, hasn't it? So let's start off with the speed and smoothness test. I'll run past at 50%. Ready? All right, so I would say, and it's hard to say because I'm not measuring this precisely, but I would say this is a little bit faster. I don't think that's necessarily a problem. I think it's still, you know, perfectly reasonable in its speed, but I think the 001 was slightly more slow and controlled and certainly quieter. Although to be fair, I don't think I've serviced this one like I've serviced the 001, so. If it's a bit noisier, that could be why. I uh, haven't serviced any of these recently though, so it's not like uh, super unfair. Anyway, torque. Yeah, it's able to turn its wheels, but it speeds up massively once I relinquish my finger. So torque perhaps not as strong as some of the others. What's the crawl like though? Let's give that a go. Ready, forwards, easing up. Oh yeah, that was really good. Look at that. So I'd say there's not a lot in it really. They're both marvelous crawlers. Although, has this one stalled? It might have stalled there. So, I don't know, I would say there's not a lot in it. And you'll have to let me know what you think, but I would say again, Maybe the double O version has it. It's slightly better, isn't it? Very slightly, not a lot in it. But I certainly wouldn't say that one is vastly better than the other. Well, let's have a look at the pulling power. Okay, let's go. 
All right, let's just let that settle down. That to me looks like 0 0.68, I would say. So let's calculate that. How many times more powerful is that? Okay, so this is the smallest improvement of the lot at just 6.8 times as much. So that's in third place. The Terrier is in second place with 7.6. And then the B4 is by far the winner here in pulling power at 17.1 times. So I would say then that the B4 is the most improved in terms of performance. All right, folks, the results are in then. Which DAPL O-Gage Loco is the biggest improvement over its double O scale counterpart? I've awarded two points to the winner of each category and one point to the runner-up in each category. So, first of all, price. The smallest increase in price between the O and double O gauge model was the Sentinel, followed by the Terrier. So the Sentinel gets two points, the Terrier gets one point. In terms of weight, the B4 was the biggest improvement there, so that gets two points. The Terrier is the runner-up with just one point. In terms of detail, I think this was much easier to call. Yeah, the level of detail on the Sentinel was massively higher in O scale than it was in double O, so that gets two points. The runner-up is the B4. Some slight improvements in terms of cab detailing there and the smoke box door opening, so one point for the B4. Performance then, it was very, very close between all of them. I think the Terrier didn't win. I think the Terrier was the least improved, so that's one out of the way. I think the B4 was the most improved. Don't get me wrong, they were very, very close, but yeah, the B4 for me is two points. And then the Sentinel is the runner-up with one point. So the B4 has five points, the Terrier has two points, and the Sentinel has five points. So the Sentinel and the B4 are drawn. For me, they are equally improved over the double O scale counterparts. If I had to choose a favorite, it would be the B4. I think that is my absolute favorite O-Gage Loco. So biased as I am by how heavy and quality that Loco is, I think that has to be my favorite. But what's yours? Please let me know. So there you have it then, folks. That is three pairs of Dapo Locos that exist in two different scales. That's what I think about them. Which do you think is the most improved? And what else would you like to see Dapol produce in O scale? I ask that question because we're noticing quite a few of Dapol's double O scale locos cropping up in O gauge. So is this something we're gonna see more of from Dapol? Or are we gonna start to see some tender locos in O scale from Dapol? I'd love to know. And if you've got any ideas on that, please comment down below. For now though, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you soon. All right, cheers folks. Thank <laughs> you.